An offshore oil rig is an enormous structure that can be as large as two football fields. Many of today's oil platforms are essentially floating cities that employ a house and hundreds of people. Given the colossal nature of offshore rigs, how on earth, or in this case the ocean, does it stay fixed in place? The secret lies in the engineering genius behind the rig's architecture and anchoring systems. It's not just about throwing a bunch of steel into the water and hoping for the best, although that would be quite the spectacle. No, these rigs are anchored with military precision, and a big part of this military precision is the tension leg platforms and concrete gravity-based structures. Tension leg platforms are like the ballerinas of the sea, anchored to the ocean floor by incredibly strong tendons, gracefully swaying with the waves. The TLP is particularly suited for water depths greater than 300 meters, or about 1,000 feet, and less than 1,500 meters, or about 4,900 feet. The platform is permanently fixed tethers or tendons grouped at each of the structure's corners. A group of tethers is called a tension leg. On the other hand, concrete, gravity-based structures are the heavyweight champions, sitting on the ocean floor like the Hulk, keeping everything in check. They are essentially support structures held in place by gravity, most notably offshore oil platforms. These structures are often constructed in inlets due to their protected area and sufficient depth. The structure is constructed with steel-reinforced concrete into tanks or cells, some of which are used to control the buoyancy. Let's start with the logistics of human capital in the supply chain, the lifelines of rig life. It involves workers shuttling in on helicopters, like airborne commuters, to an isolated workplace. And the supplies? They brave the unpredictable seas on supply vessels, carrying everything from fuel to food and everything in between. While we're at it, have you ever heard of the vertical pipe transportation system? It's like a sci-fi elevator for pipes efficiently transporting these essential components from the supply vessel to the rig's deck. It's not just efficient, it's a testament to human ingenuity in the face of logistical challenges. But here's the kicker, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've just scratched the surface of the logistics that make these rigs tick. But what really happens within these oil rigs? To understand what happens within the oil rigs, you need to shift your focus from the steel and waves to the beating heart of these offshore monoliths, the incredible humans who call these rigs home. Within the oil rigs, we have a spectacular assembly of professionals. There is the medic, the unsung hero of health on the high seas, the engineer, the brains behind the rig's intricate dance within the elements, and the roughneck, the muscle and grit keeping everything running smoothly. First up, our medic, the guardian angel of the rig. In the midst of roaring machinery and unpredictable seas, the medic is the one stitching up the wounds, curing seasickness, and making sure everyone is in tip-top shape. Next, we have the engineer, the wizard behind the curtain, ensuring that the rig's heartbeat stays steady. And last but not least, the roughneck, the unsung hero of the rig's muscles climbing heights, wrestling with heavy machinery, and doing it all with a grin on their face. These aren't just cogs in the rig's machinery. They're real people whose dedication and professionalism ensure that the oil rig carries out its primary function, drilling. Speaking of drilling, ever wondered how they tap into the hidden treasures beneath the ocean floor? The process of oil rig drilling starts with the drill bit. The drill bit is essentially a rotating bit armed with industrial diamonds or a trio of interlocking bits with steel teeth grinding through the earth beneath the ocean floor. It's like a subsea ballet, with the drill bit pirouetting its way down as deep as 12,000 feet. Another important aspect of the drilling process is the mud circulation system, the lifeblood of drilling. The drilling fluid, or mud, takes a wild ride circulating from the mud pumps to the standpipe manifold, up the drill string, down to the drill bit, and back to the mud pits. Now let's talk safety, and this is where the blowout preventer, or BOP, comes in. This specialized valve is the rig's superhero, sealing, controlling, and monitoring the well to prevent any uncontrolled release of crude oil or natural gas. It is responsible for regulating well bore pressure, shutting in the well, and even severing the casing or drill pipe in case of emergencies. Given the heavy lifting and drilling that the rigs do, it becomes important to maintain the rig and ensure that it remains in good working condition. So how does this happen? 
First up is the mechanical integrity of the drill. It's not just about drilling into the deep ocean. It's about maintaining the precision and power of every turn. From the hoisting equipment that lifts and lowers the heavy loads to the drill rods transmitting power in torque, each component undergoes a meticulous inspection and maintenance routine. It's like giving the rig a regular checkup, ensuring everything is in top-notch condition to face the challenges below. And then there's the mud circulation system, a critical player in the drilling symphony. Imagine it as the rig's spa, keeping the drill bit cool, lubricated, and ready for action. Regular cleaning, fluid level monitoring, and filter replacements are essential to keep this system in tip-top shape. Now, let's shift our focus to the living quarters, the home away from home for the offshore crew. From the cleanliness of the facilities to the upkeep of communication systems, every detail is attended to. Have you ever wondered how important technology is in enhancing the efficiency, safety, and environmental performance of these oil rigs? Well, let's peel back the digital curtain and take a look. First up, we have real-time monitoring. Thanks to the Internet of Things and next-gen connectivity, offshore monitoring has evolved into a 24-7 monitoring operation involving sensors and devices spread across the rig like a high-tech web, keeping tabs on every piece of machinery, every parameter, and probably the coffee machine's water levels too. The hero here is Low Power Wide Area Networks, or LPWAN the unsung backbone of large-scale sensor networks that aggregate granular telemetry data from innumerable endpoints. Next is automation. Automated drilling control, or ADC, is the real deal, making offshore drilling safer and more efficient. It involves machines taking charge of pipe handling and tripping, eliminating the need for human intervention. It's not just about efficiency. It's about reducing accidents and making the rig a safer workplace. And hey, there are even robots in the mix, detecting gas leaks like high-tech bloodhounds. We also have remote-controlled operations taking center stage. The offshore industry is shifting towards a future where one person can supervise and perform many tasks, all from the comfort of a high-tech control center. It's like the rig is getting a futuristic makeover, with digital monitoring and control of process facilities happening from miles away. More particularly, we have the automated pipe handling systems. These bad boys not only eliminate the need for human hands in the risky business of handling pipes, but also contribute to a safer and more efficient drilling process. With all of these technologies in place, it would mean that the need for humans to do the dangerous parts of drilling is gradually being eliminated. But the very position of the oil rig means that it is subjected to adverse weather and environmental conditions. So how does the oil rig survive these adverse weather conditions? Strong winds, hurricanes, and thunderstorms are some of the possible dangers that offshore oil rigs face. The factors increase the possibility of the oil rig falling or exploding, and to avoid this, certain adaptations have to be made. First off, the design for wave impact. Waves can be a force to be reckoned with, slamming into the rig like nature's battering ram. Thus, parts of the rig that get exposed to waves are designed to withstand the maximum force carried by the waves. Next up is the low center of gravity. To maintain stability in the unpredictable ocean environment, engineers strategically design offshore rigs with a low center of gravity. This means placing heavier components like machinery and cargo below the deck. This intentional weight distribution helps counterbalance the forces acting on the rig preventing it from tipping or swaying excessively in rough seas. There is also the ballast. Ballast consists of heavy materials strategically placed within the rig structure to resist lateral forces acting on the hull. This counteracts the sideways pressure from waves and currents, preventing the rig from tilting or swaying. It is essentially the ballast's job to keep the rig upright and steady in the face of oceanic challenges. And let's not forget the coastal protection structures, like seawalls, standing tall against the fury of waves and storms. While the rig stands strong in the open sea, structures along the shoreline act as the first line of defense against the fury of waves and storms. Seawalls made from robust materials such as reinforced concrete or granite masonry absorb and dissipate the force of incoming waves. Coastal protection structures are essential for preventing erosion and shielding the rig from the relentless power of the ocean, 
enhancing overall safety and longevity. But what about the surface? The sheet pile cutoff wall acts as an underground shield, preventing the loss of foundation materials due to scouring waves or leaching. This protective barrier ensures the stability and structural integrity of the rig's foundation, contributing to its resilience against the unseen challenges lurking beneath the surface. With all of these different adaptations, it is clear that there's a lot riding on the proper functioning and operation of offshore oil rigs. This makes us ask an important question. How important is the offshore rig in the global energy market, and what is its future? Offshore rigs are not just steel giants in the ocean. They're the backbone of our energy sector. As we step into the future, their role becomes even more crucial. The energy crisis of 2022 highlighted their essential position in securing our energy needs, and the demand for rigs like jackups, semi-submersibles, and drill ships is on the rise. Looking ahead, there's a horizon filled with potential advancements such as deep-sea mining. Imagine a world where we're not just extracting oil and gas from the depths, but also valuable minerals like copper, zinc, and lithium. Deep-sea mining is on the rise, with technology allowing us to harvest these treasures from the ocean floor. However, the environmental impact is still a hot debate, so stay tuned for how this industry navigates those waters. Also, we might see the increased adaptation of renewable energy integration. The future isn't just about extracting, it's about giving back. Offshore rigs are stepping into the realm of renewable energy with technologies like floating solar PV arrays and high-capacity offshore wind turbines. The EU is setting ambitious targets for offshore wind and ocean energy, paving the way for a more sustainable energy future. And as the curtain falls on this offshore saga, the rig remains, a testament to the relentless spirit of exploration, where the wonders of human engineering meet the vastness of the ocean, creating a legacy that stretches as far as the horizon itself. Bye for now.